there, I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my virtual studio with our tour guide, Giallo. He wanted to be part of the welcoming crew to show you around the place where the magic happens. And yes, in that messy place, that's where the magic happens around here. But he wanted you to know that he is the most important part of the entire studio. Because that face, how does that face not make you smile? He loves to hang out by me all the time. He's just a mama's boy, so he has his little doggy bed that he hangs out on. He plays with his toys and he chews his bones and he takes naps there. And sometimes shares it with his sister, who is currently at the water cooler. She also likes to hang out by the window and watch for squirrels and cats and whatever walks by. Part one of our tour is going to begin now with a tour of the sketchbook. I have done a sketchbook of my room. Believe it or not, my art teachers always said, draw what you know, and so I did. I saw someone's sketchbook that was a themed sketchbook, and I really wanted to do one. And when I thought, what do I have that I could fill one sketchbook with? Well, art supplies was kind of a no-brainer here, since I am surrounded by them all the time. And I've sketched them in pencil first and then gone over them with a simple sharpie and then added watercolor to them. And I've written in lots of notes which I hope to look back on in a few years and find out what's changed. Which things don't I use anymore? Which things have been replaced by something else? And just get an idea of where I am right now in my artistic journey and where am I headed and how are things going to be changing? As I was working on this and showed it to a few people along the way, I realized everybody wants to read all the stuff, all the notes in my handwritten scribble. So I have done something to save you from trying to pause the video and squint and try to read my handwriting, which is to put together a free class on my teaching website. And it's a class all about supplies and that sort of thing. It's not a project-based class but there are lessons on each spread here. So every single spread has tons of information about the kinds of things that are in it. And there are downloadable things like brands of colored pencils. I have all of the colors listed with check boxes. So you can, in the PDF, just check all the boxes for the colors you have, check boxes for colors that you want, and that sort of thing, so that you can maybe send that list to Santa Claus if Santa Claus needs to know what you need to fill your stocking with. And there are some new videos in the class. It's not a video heavy class. And there are some videos that are already on YouTube that I'll be pulling into that class because I've already covered those topics. But I wanted to put it all into one place. All of my artistic stuff, my fine art side, my crafty side, my Bible journaling side, all in one place. And you can scroll through the lessons and just view the ones that you're most interested in. And there's also some creative lessons in there on how to kickstart the mojo and how when you're creating a scene to create something unique. When you're trying to come up with ideas for a stamp set, if you're a crafter and you want to come up with a scene for it, how do you think through that? There's also a video lesson in there. I'm not going to show you how to edit a video, but I'm going to tell you the stuff that I do use and you can do with that what you will. I'm going to have a whole lesson on video philosophy, the kinds of things I think about when I've put my channel together and the way I've branded my own work. And you can take or leave out of any of that what you're interested in. I've covered all the mediums that I use primarily on YouTube right now and some that I haven't. I have a ton of pastels that I want to start using more. I have to get to them. I need time. Anybody have any extra time at the time store? I could use some, so please send it to me and <laughs> I will use it to great effect. So now we're at the end of that sketchbook and we'll start the real tour of the real room, which hasn't actually changed much since the last time I filmed a studio tour. This side of the room used to be where I ran my nonprofit out of, but I have cards on the counter in those boxes. The shelf up top is a lot of my most recent art books that I've been inspired by. And on the bottom shelf is all my sketchbooks. Yeah, I have a lot of them. <laughs> and down below here, I've got all of my flat, uh, full sheets of watercolor paper and drawing papers. A couple of chairs, because I have two dogs and they each need their own chair. Yeah, I don't get to sit in them much. 
I have a cabinet for, full of all of my business papers down below and my Bible journaling resources above. And these cabinets here, these drawers, I have two of them that will hold clear stamps in these clear envelopes. And that's it. I don't let myself go over having two of those. And I have two drawers with DVD cases for my cling stamps, one from Art Impressions and the other drawer is all Purple Onion. If I go over any of that, it goes in the prize box. I will not be overrun by product. So these are all my dies. I have one drawer of dies, and then the other drawers in this section are just random things. In this bin up on top, I put all the stuff that I wanna use at some point very soon. Because if I put it away in a drawer, I'll never use it. So I put it out there, so I keep looking at it and thinking, I gotta do something with that. And of course I have tchotchkes everywhere, because yeah, when we are artists, we have all kinds of fun tchotchkes. There's a board here that I am going to demonstrate some brush testing with because I practice my brush strokes on that and then I have flowers. I always keep fresh flowers in the studio because they just make my heart happy so that is a good thing. And now we get closer to the magic. On the bottom shelf is all my Bibles. I do have a lot of them because I've tested out a lot so I can show a lot of them on my Bible journaling channel. Up on top is my water-based markers. I've got two different sets of Zig markers a full set of Tombos, and then over around the corner is a set of Marvies, and then in the red bin is the 20 that bear my name, my, <laughs> my 20 colors that are in my conversion chart. And then my Gemini that I use for die cutting, little Kleenex box balanced on top precariously. Down here on the counter is my trimmer, and that stays handy because I use it a lot. Behind that is all my tubes of paint, above that is drawing supplies, and a few, just for the sake of history, wood stamps. <laughs> I don't really use them, but they're there. I have a lot of cardstock in plain basic colors. I don't have any pattern paper, I just use plain cardstock. On top of the other shelf is watercolor pads and drawing pads and that sort of thing. In the center is notebooks that have all of my swatch cards in them for different mediums. The blue cabinet has just a whole bunch of water bottles and blending tools and that kind of thing in them. Obviously gobs of pens. I have pens coming out my ears. And my Copic markers that I store vertically in this container. Yes, I store them vertically. Do not ever try to tell me that is not possible because my markers work just fine and they're stored vertically. The sketchbooks on the left are the ones that I'm currently working through just different kinds of sketchbooks, and there's a lesson all about that in the class. I have a bunch of stamps out in this bin right now because it's Christmas season and I'm working like mad on making a lot of Christmas cards. Vintage cups for my brushes. I really only use like six or eight of those, but I have a ton. I do work vertically when I paint if possible, so I have an easel. And up above that, I have a smiling dog picture to remind me to smile, because sometimes we forget. We have to remind ourselves of things like that. Down below, I've got my heat gun, my airbrush gun, and my watercolor, my little watercolor uh, palette there. Next, we've got the Quiet Sharp Bow Stitch pencil sharpener. And on the wall back here is my beautiful rainbow of Hydrus watercolors, which I have started to get back into. Hadn't used them for a long time, and I want to start playing with them again. And then my replica surface. These are kind of wipeable, not washable, but wipeable surfaces with different textures on them that I like to switch out once in a while. And my water got so dirty, I decided I had to go mid video and change it so that I am no longer filming dirty water. There you go. That's my video setup. I've got two lights on either side and an Archon stand in the back that holds both my camera up on top and my iPad, which I don't use the iPad for any of the filming. I just have it there to watch TV while I'm uh, working and then I have a couple things holding my Archon down so that it doesn't tip over with the weight of the camera. On the floor, lots of boards for painting. My air compressor printers are down there. Long drawer here for lots of rulers and the like. You'll notice my drawers are horribly messy. I decided not to clean them and let you see the mess that things really are because you don't have to be all tidy in order to be creative and have a good room that works for you. Underneath is a bunch of different kinds of pads of paper. I have my drawers that are closest to me 
and this is the one on the left hand side is all tapes and adhesives and then we've got paints and a few things I got a couple of punches that's all I have for punches got my ATG tape refills right there because I go through ATG tape a lot my general everything drawer my score pad score pal my my ATG gun masking tape all kinds of sticky notes pens and things watercolor stuff of all sorts just a random smattering of everything is in there and then the drawer at the bottom is pencils watercolor pencils and regular colored pencils and my two toe three which i use like every day next up in the corner is a little lazy susan that has lots of really nice cardstock this is the stuff that i stamp on so i put that under there so it doesn't get any dust like sometimes the colored stuff does up above Next is an ink drawer, and it's kind of messy, but I don't have many inks. This is it. I have for inks. Nothing is rainbow order, notice. I just have a few inks in the drawer, so there you go. I have a drawer with misties, rags, embellishments, and these are from a couple of my classes where we put together books as we do the learnings. So I've got a couple of those in there, and then this is my pastels drawer. I recently pulled them all together from different places around the house and went, oh my gosh, I have more pastels and charcoals than I know what to do with. So I'm gonna start playing with them. These last couple drawers are filled with things that I don't access every day and they're even more random than some of the other drawers that I have. And the center one is filled with my marker refills and I refill probably every couple of weeks when I get a significant number of markers that need maintenance. But the other drawer down here is to totally completely random as well. And I hope you've enjoyed getting to see inside my random messy drawers and my random messy studio. If you are not yet a subscriber, I invite you to click that button and see three to four to sometimes five videos in a week. Sometimes they will include dogs because Giallo and Vienna love to be on camera. I also hope to see you in the My Virtual Studio free class. There's a link in the doobly-doo to go see that. And I will see you again very soon with another creative video. Thank you much. Bye-bye.